The purpose of this meeting tonight is to deliver people from the power of the devil. Anyone that calls it something else, it's not even a patriotic rally. As much as I love the conservative Christian movement, that's not what tonight is about. And I noticed today in prayer there were two ways that Jesus destroys the power of Satan. One is sickness and demonic possession. The second is delivering the human soul from the slavery of the devil. And it is the second one that we're going to look at for a few minutes. The Bible says that we live in dangerous times. Here's where you and I part company. If you're an environmentalist, you'll believe that the problem with the human race is global warming. The Bible believes it's moral cooling. And it says, because lawlessness will increase, the love of many will grow cold. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1, but understand this. Look at me. When the Bible says to understand something, understand it. That in the last days, the days we're in, in the last days will come dangerous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. That's now. Raising a child has never been harder than today. Holding a marriage together has never been harder than today. There's never been a day in American history where parents have more anxiety over their children's education as they do right now. America has not been this painful, this miserable, and this divided since the Civil War. So when I looked up the word in the original language that said dangerous or perilous times, I found it only one other time in the New Testament. And it was in Matthew chapter 8, and I'm going to read the verse. And it says, and when he arrived on the other side of the country, the Gadarenes, two men under the control of demons ran and met him. Coming out of the tombs, so fierce and savage that no one was able to pass that way. The word fierce and savage appears in Matthew chapter 8 and in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And why is that important? Because it establishes for us the emotional disease that we are suffering as a nation. It says that we will become selfish. I'm going to add one thing that I think everyone needs to know. When Jesus stepped out of the boat in the Gadarenes, the two men that were possessed lived in a cave miles away, and they felt something. It was Jesus' sandal touching the beach. And when it did, they didn't bother to resist. They ran as if some force was so overpowering, so overwhelming, that they had no choice. And they ran and fell before him and begged him to have mercy on them. That's the supremacy of Christ. Oh, look at me. The, the exorcist and all those movies are wrong. There is no moment where a priest and a demon will have at it all night. Not if there's an anointing. You need to help me. Not if the anointing is there. And I'll, I'll remind me later to tell you another story. I've got to keep moving. And it said in verse 29 of this chapter 8, And behold, they, scree they shrieked and screamed, what have, we to do with you? what have you to do with us, Christ, the Son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time? Christ's power over the devil is so great that they did not bother to resist him but to run shrieking and falling before him. 
The point is, is that we are not in fierce times. We are not in dangerous times. The Bible isn't saying that. It's using another word. Whatever drove two men to never wear clothes, to screech, live among the dead, to break chains, and to have a form of insanity that is almost beyond any manual or any description. It said they were fierce. And the Bible is telling us, in the last days, the immorality, the unnaturalness, the viciousness, the perversion, the depth of loving things that are sick and unnatural will be driven by devils. So imagine rewriting 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Know this, that in the last days, perilous, demon-possessed times will come. Now, until you understand that a psychiatrist cannot help you like Christ. That, that a drug treatment center cannot help you like Christ. That there is no pill, there is no meditation, there is no religion in the world, except that Christ is more valuable in this hour than he's ever been before. It has never been, listen to me, it has never been good to be outside of Jesus. But this is the worst time. The Bible says that he goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who does he have permission to torment? Who does he have permission? No matter how much you meditate, no matter, no matter how much purity, virtue signaling, fasting, uh, whatever you may do, taking baths, going to a masseuse, whatever it is, read a book until you answer the question of how do I get Satan off my back? And the only way I can do it is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He doesn't respect your religion. He doesn't respect your chanting. There is nobody that I feel more compassion on than the devil worshiper and the witch that worships Satan. I love you. I look at you and I go, didn't you read the end of the book? You know, I remember one day reading in an article that the psychic hotline went bankrupt. Oh, hold it. And I thought, you'd have thought they'd have seen it coming. 